Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on the Sentra. We're getting this thing track ready for the upcoming season. Um, this is going to be filmed a little uh, ahead of all the other stuff because I actually got to replace the control arms for uh, PA inspection. This ball joint over here is bad. I'm going to go ahead and do them both. And um, this was one of the things that was actually on my list. I wanted to get some... Uh, Better control arms with new bushings, uh, greasable ball joints for the race season so I can try to upkeep them and keep everything working nice, but I'm doing it right now for inspection. I'm going to drop this hardware in the ultrasonic cleaner for a little bit, try to get some of this gunk off. That way I have a clean surface to apply some anti-seize. Looks a little better. Here we got the new control arms. They're uh, Mevotec Supreme. They come with a greasable ball joint, so hopefully they last a little bit longer. Uh, only problem is one of the control arms didn't come with the grease fitting. Um, and since I need my truck at work tomorrow anyway, but I'm also taking the car in, I'm just going to trailer it in. I'll stop by Lowe's and pick one of these up and just uh, get it in the bottom of the control arm and shoot some grease in it and drop it off at the mechanic. There we go. There's one. All shiny and new. And the second one's on. Now that it's inspected and ready to go, it's time to give it an alignment. Because the control arms, in fact, did change the alignment. As you can see from this clip, right after I picked the car up from the inspection station, with the new control arms, you can see my steering wheel when I'm going straight. The steering wheel's not straight anymore. This is how much the alignment changed just from having a bad ball joint. Measuring in centimeters, 171.6. And back here, 173.8. That's a lot. That is 2.2 centimeters or 22 millimeters of toe in. I normally shoot for one to two. Um, for track use, I try to go for as, as close to zero as possible, maybe one millimeter of toe in. But 22 millimeters, I just, that is so much change just from changing the control arms. That's wild. All right, pretty much perfect where I want it. 172.6 in the front. And 172.7, 172.8-ish in the rear. So I got about one to two millimeters of toe. Perfect for what I want. I live on a pretty empty road where uh, I have a straight stretch. I can kind of drive on a couple miles an hour and see where the wheel is straight. Uh, the rack is already straightened. This this is a relatively new steering rack in this car. I make sure to measure how much of each outer tie rod is sticking out, like how much of the thread is out, so that I know that uh, the rack is actually centered and it's not biasing one side or the other to achieve a straight alignment. So that's already done. Now I'm just going to straighten the wheel. And um, yeah, unless the alignment's way out sometime in the future, I really shouldn't have to do this again. All right, let's get the steering wheel straightened. So, the steering wheel is loose, but it's attached. Like, I can't pull it back enough off the splines. I got my impact. All right, stop right here. Let's try one spline over. straight let's go ahead and torque this that's about how tight it was before and 
Uh, I'm going to hook the battery before I put the airbag back in, actually. All right, there we go. Alignment complete. The steering wheel is centered. Make sure the horn works. Yep, good to go. On to the next. I'm going to vacuum this mat off just because it's gross, but I got everything out of this trunk. Obviously, when you're uh, on track, they don't want a bunch of stuff in your car flying around. So, everything but the spare, since that's like held down. So, I used one of these like carpet combs and vacuumed right behind it and other than the staining i made the carpet come like right back to life it used to be really flat and kind of crappy looking but like i said other than the staining don't look at the color but the texture it looks brand new that's awesome i never thought i'd say it but like i think at this point the nicest part of this poor crappy little car is the trunk it's definitely not the paint so the video before this, you'll see I just redid the shop and changing the oil in the Sentra before our track day in two days is the first thing I get to do in the new setup of the garage. up through here on this side I'm usually like trying to get these ramps through just walk right through just a drop almost got a clean break So we're going to pull the wheels off this because obviously the wheels that uh, are on the car right now are the wheels that came off this. They're 17 by 6s. These are 17 by 7s. And on the track you need a little bit of need a little bit of grip. When you don't have power, you might as well have grip so they can corner faster. So uh, I'm going to try to use a board to spread out the weight of picking this car up. Because as you can see, week by week it's losing more of its self as a whole. So. We're going to get the wheels off, set the thing down on its frame rails before we strip every good part off of it and make it not exist anymore. I'm also going to put a new copper washer on my drain plug. I don't think I've ever done it. Um, so this is probably the uh, copper washer from when it was in Japan. So, new copper washer on there. It's funny how small they are when they start and then they get this wide. Crazy. Let's grab a new filter. And just for a little extra protection, I'm gonna run the advanced full synthetic. Since I'm probably gonna spend a lot of time on track at wide open throttle or at least high RPM. So the next thing we're doing here is changing tires. These two are going to go on the back. They have some decent tread left on them, so I'm going to get some more use out of them. But these are pretty shot. And they're also not going to be as grippy as these tires for track time. But unfortunately, I only have these two. Uh, they were free. They came with the Nismo wheels when I bought them. So I'm going to take these. 2019 Tiger Paul uh, Uniroyal maybe it's Uniroyal Tiger Paul I don't know but these tires made in 2019 that are kind of all season tires and putting these sort of higher performance I'm not going to call them high performances I don't know but higher performance than this that were made way back in 2010 according to the uh, date so 13 years old 4 years old all season 4 years old higher performance 13 years old they, they might honestly be the same i might be doing this for nothing but look at the tread though the tread looks cooler i mean that's something it's got a cooler tread pattern it's got to give me some cred right
So this is why you clean the bead when you mount tires. These tires always went flat, so I stopped driving on them, obviously. Look at how much air that bead leaks on the front and then the back. Well, the back's not much better. So that's why when I'm mounting new tires, you would have seen me go around the whole bead with a wire wheel on my grinder, clean all that old rubber off, and any little metal burrs that stick up, I can smooth right out. Well, when we mounted these tires, that was two days ago now. Uh, these two are still right where I put them at 34 PSI. This one's at 33, so it lost one PSI over the last two days. And this one is so flat that the tire gauge doesn't even know I'm trying to read a tire. So I, if I ha don't have time, I won't do this one. But this one needs, needs done. Well, it's nice and wet out, but the uh, new tires and the uh, wheels that this car came with are back on it. So I can have some decent grip today. Um, I usually run my tires at like 40 PSI for fuel efficiency. But uh, I have them down at the recommended, I think it's 32. They're at 34, but they're in the range of where they should be in order to achieve better grip rather than being harder and rolling easier. I don't know if I'm going to actually get any footage uh, on the track today. We'll see. Uh, if I don't, then this will be the end of the video. So when we left the house, it was rainy and, and just super crappy. And I didn't really consider getting a whole lot of footage of the track because it's rainy and crappy. But it's now sunny and 78 degrees. It got like 30 degrees warmer over the past two and a half hours. And we've just been creeping at 20 miles an hour most of the way to Virginia. So here we are driving onto the track. I don't have any GoPro footage because right before we departed here, the GoPro decided to stop recording. And then like two laps into the practice session, the GoPro mount flew off of the back window anyway, so there wouldn't have been any footage. In either circumstance, Nobody did it, but we're supposed to go out there. This is pretty early on in the warm up. We were just cruising around. I think we were holding, you know, 40, 50 miles an hour on average, obviously, except for that really sharp corner right there, just to uh, get to know the track. This has been the first time all of us have been on it, and we want to get the tires warmed up and everything. Now, I feel like this clip had to be really early on in the second session. The first session, that BMW that I'm catching up on right now was behind me, so we had switched. And we're going like so slow. We were doing that S corner at 50 to 60 miles an hour by the end of the day. So I hope this wasn't an at speed clip. If so, that's embarrassing because it felt light speed inside the car. Well, it was a successful track day, but it ended like this. Luckily, it stayed dry the whole day. Well, just believe me, that, that's, that's, that stop sign was about to fly off the pole about a minute ago. Now, the last thing we're going to do after the track day is do a nut and bolt check off camera, because that's pretty extensive, and take these wheels off and then put the daily driver wheels back on so that uh, I don't catch a nail or something on the way to work with these... Uh, higher performance-ish tires because I don't want to be just chucking new tires and stuff all the time. So if you check this out, the difference between street and track driving, the very edges of the tires on the street don't get touched. So this has been smoothed out from the drive home and then everything over here was touched on track. You can see the line right there. None of this was touched but this edge out here was used from the extra turning force and then there's this lip from the tire being scuffed up real hard from sliding a little bit on the track, you know, understeer, and then being smoothed back out just driving on the street.